Hey gardeners, we're gonna talk about cuttings today. I'm gonna to show you how I root cuttings. It's the first year that I'm really rooting cuttings. Typically I graft, but I wanna show you an easy method to propagate via rooting today. Before I jump into that, today was an exciting day because I got my scions from Harvey at Figaholics. Um, Harvey, in my opinion, is the absolute best place to get fig cuttings from. You can see some of these high-end varieties I was able to get um, fairly inexpensively. Some of these varieties auction for hundreds of dollars. So Harvey's pretty amazing because he puts these out once a year at very economical prices. So here's another stack of fig cuttings that I got from another uh, vendor, Willis C. He's the founder of the R Figs Forum. Um, similar to Harvey, he does offer once a year a lot of different varieties. He grows something like 300 varieties himself and offers cuttings to the general public um, at fairly inexpensive prices. Here's an example of a cutting I got from him. You can see the wood is green. It's um, All his cuttings do have three nodes on them, which is kind of the minimum to expect. Um, opposite here, this is a cutting I got from Harvey. Uh, you can see the bark is lignified, which is what you would want in a cutting. You can see it's um, much longer. Uh, this is not something you would normally expect to get something like a nine inch cutting, but with Harvey, you can. He just puts out wonderful cuttings. He didn't seal the ends, but he did wrap this in the correct thing, which is saran wrap. You want this to breathe a little bit. Um, these were vacuum sealed and I don't really like that because it actually caused the cuttings to be completely wet on arrival. So I ha had to actually uh, take them out of all their packs and then repackage them in saran wrap while I wait for bud break on my figs. Um, so I will be grafting all these, so that's another thing. While you wait, you want to put this in a refrigerator in your crisper drawer so that it keeps them cold. While we wait for um, the fig trees to wake up, you don't really want to graft onto a dormant tree. It's not really going to take. I have not had good success with that. Um, my best success, near 100%, is to graft in spring at bud break. It's the perfect time when the sap is flowing on the root stock. All right guys, so I sold cuttings for the first time this year on my own in-ground trees. They've reached some maturity now to allow me to do that. So what I needed to do was that green cutting that you saw inside, that is not something that you want to sell. And knowing that, I knew I had to prune all that off so that I could get to the good lignified wood um, for the cuttings that I would sell to the public. So what I did with those green cuttings is I attempted to root them rather than just toss them. All right, so as far as materials, what you'll need, you'll need a tote. What I got here is, um, you know, one of these that has the uh, tops that you can flip up and down. Um, it's a little bit more rigid plastic than the, the clear ones that you can find for shoes and such. So you need a bin and that's gonna serve to trap the humidity. And I found that you also need a heating pad. Um, if you can keep your air temperature between 75 and 85 degrees, you know, you have a heater running in a room, that's great. But if you're like me and you don't want to heat an entire room for your fig cuttings, what I use is a heat mat and it's 10 inches wide by 20 inches long. And that just goes on the ground underneath this bin and it'll raise the um, temperature just for your, your bin. Now I found when I did that alone, um, the roots would cook. So what I did was I added some straw, just a few inches of straw at the bottom of the bin, and that serves as a buffer. So I started this cutting about a month ago, and you can see it's developed some nice roots to the point now where it's ready to go into a one gallon pot. So how did I do this? Okay, for this part, you know, you might just buy a cutting. 
if you have your own tree that you want to propagate, look at me, I've got this Borgesat Gris, which incidentally is a wonderful uh, variety to root. Very easy. You can see the cutting on this is green. This is not something that I would ever sell to someone. It's not really suitable. But rather than just clip it off and, you know, not use it, go, go to waste, I'm going to go ahead and make a cut here. All right, so for my cutting here, it's about five inches. First thing I'm going to do is wrap the top half, the stuff that's going to be exposed above the soil line in body tape. You can use Parafilm M, it's a medical type of tape, and you're just going to stretch it. Just stretch it around the cutting here. Okay, that's just going to protect it from drying out. Rust is exposed. Okay, these are the bags that I use. See, it's six inches wide by 12 inches tall, two mil zipper plastic bags. Okay, you can get these anywhere. Amazon is where I got mine. Okay, I've mixed up some soil here. And you can see, filled up my bag. It's labeled as well, so we're ready to go. My next step is I'm gonna just slightly score the bottom of this. It just helps. You know, you don't, you don't need to gouge it. Just slightly scratch it. Just like that, and it'll help promote some rooting. Here I've got some Clonex. Shake that up. Probably best to put that in its own cup. And put it straight in here. Like this. The last step is I'm just gonna tie this off. You can use a rubber band. I just happen to have these little tourniquets that I got for grafting. Okay. And there you go. It's got its own little humidity chamber built in. Not only does it have the parafilm on here, but it's got this. You don't want to close the top. You want some airflow. So we've got our fig pop now. We can place this in the container um, and then just pretty much leave it alone for a month. All right, now we're back to the cutting that was started a month ago. This is a Chicago Hardy. Uh, this one seems to have put on a lot of roots. Some of the varieties are not going to be as fast to root. This one seems to be a fairly vigorous one. So to up-pot it, I'm going to be as gentle as possible. So I'm going to just, I'm not going to reach into the bag. I'm just going to break apart the seam here. Okay. All right. I've got this one gallon container. I've already partially filled it with media. I'm using the same thing, pretty much. Um, it has a little bit of coconut core in it, uh, vermiculite, and perlite. What I'm gonna do next is with the mycos, I'm gonna add some. You can distribute it all the way through the soil, or what I do is I just kind of put it on top here where the root ball is going to go because it's going to actually water it down anyways and then as gently as possible I'm going to remove this cutting from the bag and you can see it's got a pretty good root mass on it now I'm going to go ahead and put that in the pot okay can actually use the same media. All 
All right, so we've up-potted this. You saw a good good root mass on this. Um, it has not started to break bud yet, but it will be soon. I've left the parafilm on because I want to keep this scion that you know has has rooted, but still needs to grow some. Um, left it to protect it from drying out. And the tag, I made sure that I took the tag off the plastic bag and stuck it on the pot so I don't lose track of what variety this is. You can see some of the cutting is exposed. Not all of it is wrapped in parafilm. I find it's most important to protect the top. So that's going to be the first part that dries out. This bottom part, not so much. On watering, um, it's still pretty moist, the soil media. You don't want it to dry out. So what I'll do is I'll just get a tray. I'll put I'll put this pot in a tray, and then I'll put some water inside that tray. And, and well, you don't really want to water from the top because uh, that could could lead to rot. It's better to go from the bottom where the roots are. I hope you found this video helpful on propagating your cuttings by rooting. I think the biggest lesson is to leave them alone, not to fuss so much. Um, when you keep looking at them and, you know, taking them out of their bins and stuff, that can slow down their progress. If you actually just leave them alone for a month, um, it's amazing what they'll do.